I made a commit to the C3 language repository doing some RISC-V embedded testing. Hello world testing. So I thought I would walk through that. You can see if I click on contributors and scroll all the way down to the bottom here, here I am uh, showing that I actually did this commit. So let's clone this repository. And here we are. So in the resources uh, directory under examples, there is a directory now called embedded. And I created a directory called RISC-V QEMU. And, and I have um, done a bunch of videos for RISC-V, uh, Hello World, C, using C as one of them. And I've got that up in the card if you want to see that video because it's instructive as to how I eventually came to create this one. This video is unlike some of the others. I did this work a week or two ago, and I didn't really have time to make a video, uh, but I wanted to get the commit into the maintainer. So um, I did that and decided to just make this video sort of retroactively. You can see with C3, I'm importing a UART module and a semi-host module. I set up a constant for the base UART uh, registers. Uh, this is the base as implemented in QEMU for the for UART zero, and then I declare a function called main, uh, and I export it as the symbol main. And this is important because if I don't do this, C3 is going to create a symbol using the name of the file plus the name of the function. So it's going to create a symbol called hello.main, and I don't really I don't really want that. So I'm going to create a UART structure. I'm going to instantiate it and I'm going to set the address at UART base. That's what this line does right here. This grabs the uh, FIFO enable bit and it sets it in the uh, FIFO control register here. We're going to go look at the UART here in a second. Uh, this calls the put s function off of the UART module. And then this right here calls semi hosting to exit the embedded application. It's important here because I wanted to be able to insert this into the maintainer's um, GitHub workflow. And so this is a way to do that using semi-hosting to have a signal sent to the host, which is running QEMU so that it exits cleanly. So let's go into the UART module and look at this quickly. So I create some constants, this structure, declares the various registers of the UART. We've got the, uh, the data register that you put data into and get data out of from the UART. We've got the FIFO control register, and then we've got the line status register. So this function here checks whether the transmit hold register is empty or not, and it does it by getting the value of the line status register and uh, I do a volatile load because it's important to note that C3 does not have a volatile des uh, descriptor. I, I forget what you call it, but basically the, the the prefix where you can declare something as volatile to tell the optimizer that uh, the, these values can change out from under you. So you always basically need to read from memory. Don't do any, any optimization. It takes, though, the address of what it is that you're trying to load from. And so that's why I've got... To, uh, the ad the address specifier uh, referenced here and then we and in this uh, transmit hold register empty bit in order to be able to determine whether or not the transmit hold register is empty or not and then we return that by casting it as a bool so then our put c function here um, I utilize the um, I don't know kind of Python-esque nature of C3 by accepting a pointer to the structure here. And then I accept the input character that we're going to put to the UART. I check to see whether or not the transmit hold register is empty, which is this function here. And then I do a volatile store to the data register of the UART, which is here, um, using the character that's been that's been input. And again, volatile store, we're going to change the value of the register no matter what. 
And then finally, we've got a put s function. Again, it takes a pointer to this, which is this structure, and then it takes a pointer to a character string. And then I basically loop over the character string, incrementing one, you know, one character at a time, doing a put c. Okay, so this, this right here, and this cannot run uh, bare metal without a little bit of preamble code. And so I've got a, an assembly helper here that uh, sets up the stack pointer, right? Because the stack, by default, the stack pointer is not initialized. So in order for you to call functions and so forth, you need to set a stack pointer to some area in memory. And that area in memory is set up down here by setting up a bit of space and setting the top of that space because uh, stacks are grown from the top down. And then I load the that address into the stack pointer um, and then just simply call the main function. I jump to it. Now let's talk about this code a little bit, semi-hosting. So semi-hosting is a concept that was uh, done by ARM actually a long time ago. The RISC-V team basically adopted the specification. And so let's go, let's just go have a quick look at the specification because this code was basically copy pasted from this link. So here we are, here is the semi-hosting binary interface document. Uh, so it, it basically says these three instructions, uh, SLLI, eBreak, and SRAI must be 32-bit wide instructions. They may not be compressed. Same sequence is used on all RISC-V architectures um, and so forth. And so they give you they give you the assembly that you need to actually call the semi-hosting capabilities, semi-hosting functions. So you need two parameters set up in A0 and A1. It's actually, it, it says it down here. You need um, A0 containing the operation number register, which, which is the operation number register. That tells the type of semi-hosting operation that you're trying to do. And then A1 needs to be filled with the parameter register. And that parameter register varies, or at least the contents of the values pointed to within it vary based upon what operation you are trying to do. So I created a function within C3. I got a module here called semi-host. And this module creates a structure of those, of the parameters, sys exit extended function call. I probably should have named this specifically to this call, but I didn't do that. This makes it seem like these parameters are generic for all semi-hosting calls, but that's not really true. Um, this structure applies to the sys ex exit extended operation. I created a function called exit. And so what I'm, what I'm trying to have happen here is have my bare metal application signal to the host that, hey, I'm done and you should be done too. You should exit. Because I want the workflow, the, the GitHub workflow that the maintainer is using to test this with, I want it to not get hung up um, by my bare metal application. So I want QEMU to be able to exit. So I created a function called exit and I take the status code of exit, which this is meant, this is meant to match uh, what happens in Linux. When you, when you call exit, you tell it the exit status code that you want it to exit with. I create a uh, semi-host parameters structure here with the parameters that I can fill in. Field one being the fact that I am um, calling or I want to call application exit and then field two being the status code that is passed up the chain for QEMU to exit with. And then I call the semi-host, sys semi-host um, symbol, which I just described over here, right here. Here's the semi-host symbol that I'm calling. And I pass in uh, sys exit extended, which this is the operation and I pass in the address of these two parameters here, which are specific to this call. So this is this is a filling A0, and this is filling A1. And so again, 
this function call assumes you've already primed a0 and a1 with the with the appropriate parameters. Let's take a look at the make file because that's important. So C3 has its own built-in uh, build capability, but since I have the start assembler file, uh, I decided to just use make. Even though C3 actually has embedded assembly capabilities, it says it's currently untested for RISC-V, and I may actually do another video where I actually try to combine these things, but for now, I kept them separate. What I do is I build a hello statically linked library that contains both the UART C3, the semi-host C3, and the hello C3. It basically combines all those things together. So that's what this is doing here. And you'll notice I've, I'm not including the standard lib because I don't need it. And I'm not creating an entry point because again, I want very specific control over the entry point which is why I did uh, this here, right? So this is building my hello.a. This is building my assembly start file. This actually calls QEMU with semi-hosting enabled, passing in the ELF that was just built. So let's run this. Here's my hello world, which is from here to the UART. And you can see that it basically just exits. And if I ha we had not put the semi-hosting exit call in here, this would just be hanging. Uh, QEMU uh, would, would not exit. It would just be spinning. Uh, and it would be spinning here if that main function exited, right? So... Let's, I want to show you some things that I learned while, uh, while doing this. So I'm going to take out, I'm going to take out this no entry and I'm going to take out, uh, this, uh, use standard live no. So you can see quite a bit of chatter from C3 regarding what appears to be missing symbols. I didn't follow through as to why I'm getting all this chatter. Uh, I actually think this may be related to load order problems, but um, in any case, I wasn't using the standard library. So I figured out that there was a way to basically tell C3 that I'm not, that I wasn't using it. And so what I wound up doing then was saying this, use standard lib equals no. And then let's do make again. Right, and so so those other errors are gone or warnings are gone, but so what this is actually complaining about is uh, sort of an internal setup that C3 does for you, um, which again, I don't want it to do. I want, I want C3 to just sort of get out of my way and let me rig this up because this is bare metal. And so if you say no entry, uh, C3 is, is not going to do anything. It's basically going to assume that you've got it all understood as to what you're doing. And so if I do make, let's do make clean one more time and a make, now it, now it builds. Okay, so those are two things that I, that I learned. Um, one other thing that I did not know is you'll notice this extern main here. I'm going to take this out of the linker script. And so what you'll notice here is I get an undefined reference to main. Although main is there, main exists, but the problem here is that my linker right here lists the hello library and the uh, start out of order. If I switch these around, if I put start here, the error goes away. That seemed arbitrary to me. 
Uh, I figured out that you can basically just declare something as extern, which sort of, I guess, forward declares the fact that this is eventually going to exist. So if I run make, now the problem goes away. So that's that's another weird thing that I encountered, that the order and the uh, linker matters, or can matter unless you make it not matter. Uh, and then finally, this flag right here was something that I specifically ran into when I was building this under Linux because the GitHub workflow, the CI workflow, runs, uh, I think, Ubuntu 20 or 22, I, I forget which. This is on, I'm running this process on my Mac. Now, if I take this out and I do a make clean and then a no, make clean and then a make, everything, everything works fine. And in fact, if I do a make run, it works. But if I do this exact same thing on Linux, which I'm not going to show because I would need to load up Docker and do a whole bunch of stuff, um, I get version mismatch between the risk five versioning between start and uh, what's in hello.a. I think it has something to do with the fact that LLVM, which is what C3 uses, and the linker are producing code of, the, of different versions of the ISA. At least that's what my suspicion is. So after doing a bunch of experimentation, uh, I came up with this flag, which tells the assembler to use this version of the ISA spec, which then allows the linker to reconcile or, or not really reconcile, but it, but it basically creates a hello.a and a start.o on the same version of the ISA spec, which the linker can deal with. So those were the three sort of nuances that I ran into building this, but now everything seems to work. I uh, hope you found the video helpful and uh, see you next time. Thanks for watching.